Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be talking about protecting your energy during intense energy shifts. Right now we are in turbulent times. Precisely right now we are in the phase where the star Sirius is aligning with our sun. That's what people call the Lion's Gate portal. We had a strong full moon, but what's even more importantly as I mentioned in the video about the Hopi prophecy is the Earth is moving through 2160 year old cycles and each cycle goes under certain zodiac sign and the age of Pisces started around 2160 years ago and according to Mayan's calendar it ended around the year 2012, around December 21st. Nobody exactly knows when, but it's a theory. But what started happening after that, a huge awakening started happening. And then a big change started happening after 21st of December 2021. And right now, what we are seeing is a huge transition that is happening. The split has begun from old age of living to a new age of living, from third dimensional awareness to higher dimensional awareness, more conscious living. And it is happening, a huge paradigm shift is happening all around the world, which means <clears throat> that the old paradigms has been have been disturbed the old energies have been disturbed and what needs to purify will come to the surface. What is not serving us will be erased, will be purified. And those who are not strong enough and who don't know how to cope with those energies will be really, really disturbed. So that's why it's so important to learn to navigate ourselves through those times. We can do so much. We can empower ourselves with the right knowledge, with the right tools, with the right skills. But we have to pay attention to our own personal and soul needs. So I want to give you nine steps that will help you to stay aligned with yourself because what's happening during these strong energy shifts is that a part of you, your, your wiser part of you is starting to speak louder to yourself, which is something truly beautiful that is happening to many of us. We may start to sense our own intuitive guidance, what we have to do, what's our mission here at this unique time, and what's our part in this evolution of consciousness. That's where many people awaken up to their inner senses to recognize, oh, that's what I want to do. But because of all those disturbing energies, um, we may feel easily distracted, we may f feel easily confused and emotionally overwhelmed and stressed out, and we may experience many mood shifts and persistent tiredness despite getting enough sleep, intense vivid dreams <clears throat> that may sometimes be even negative ones like, um, you know, nightmares and things like that. It's all due to the process of purification. So we just need to be really, really aware of what is happening and be as best objective observers as we can be when it comes to those things. So the first step that will help you to protect your energy right now is to really, really limit distraction. So distraction means action away from where you want to be, where you want to be or where you want to go. And when you have a certain clear goal, a clear destination, even if it's just an emotional experience, like my goal for my future is to be even more at peace with myself, to be even more grateful, to, to live a life of um, in, intense blessings, to feel blessed, to, f to feel loved by life and things like that, whatever it is, if those are your goals, then distraction is action away from that, constantly feeding yourself up with information that are not serving that, that are not feeding that gratitude, that love, that joy, that whatever, and it is lowering down your energy. So limit your distractions, pay attention to your 
emotions and energy levels. Be aware of any sudden shifts or changes in your mood. This is something really important because you notice, oh, this is what affected me, right? Sometimes in the middle of the day, you just experience uh, a mood shift out of nowhere and you may be, oh, what's going on here? And if you slow down and meditate a little bit on it, you will notice that something happened and when you pay attention and you release, you just let go of that energy, certain belief may be awakened, just erase it out of your consciousness. You can meditate and find that belief, find from what kind of thoughts that belief is made of, and then find new thoughts that can be more beneficial for you and exchange them. It's all a mental work. And we need to become really good at mental designing of our lives. So we have to become really good at controlling our attention. That's why it's so important to limit your distraction. Recognizing how energy shifts affect you is the first step in protecting yourself. This is something that is uh, really important to know. The second step is to ground yourself, to be grounded, to work on grounding your help. It will yourself. It will help you to stay rooted and connected to the present moment. And there's many different ways. My favorite ones for grounding are meditation and spending a lot of time in nature. I often go into the forest and I walk barefoot there. I like to go to swim into the cold river. This is something truly grounding for me. Or if possible, swimming in the ocean, in the sea. This is another really grounding practice. And if possible, do it frequently. It will help you to stay purified, to stay um, centered within yourself. And then notice what may arise within your body as you're grounding yourself. Maybe a creative thought may come to you, an inspiring idea may find you, or you may just notice what you need to do, or, or um, if you should do those kind of practices more often so you can, you know, let go of any negative energy that may be stored within you. The third step that will help you to protect your energy during this turbulent times is to learn to set boundaries. If you're not doing it yet, please start setting boundaries. So what does it mean? It means that um, you put your needs at the first place. It's um, an act of selfishness a little bit, but you have to be selfish if you want to be helpful for others. You have to, to learn how to protect your energy. You have to know your personal needs your mental needs as well and you have to learn how to limit your exposure to certain people or social media or any situation that drain your energy so you can know yourself better and once you notice how uniquely you're functioning then you can decide oh do i need to talk with a therapist like why I'm always reacting this way, responding this way. Do I need to journal a little bit more to write down my thoughts, to see um, what am, am I actually thinking? So I'm always triggered by those certain events or whatever. You see, when you learn to set boundaries, like for example, somebody may invite you to a party or to a certain meeting and you say, oh, well, today I just want to be at peace with myself or whatever it is. I want to have my own space because I need to figure something out in my mind. Whatever you will say, just know why you're doing whatever you're doing. Know why you're doing it. And limit your exposure to anything that drain your energy. The fourth step that will help you to protect yourself right now is to strengthen your life force. So we are all emanating light. Even scientists found out that our DNA is emanating light. And what they've discovered when a person is 
exposed to more positive emotions, the DNA opens up and starts emanating more light, stronger light. And when a person is in negative emotional state, DNA will close down and will start um, emanating less light. So it basically means that what in Chinese culture they called qi and in many other spiritual cultures they called life force or in India they called prana is light that we are emanating and light gets stronger as we are practicing elevating our emotional state and to strengthen then our life force means that um, we elevate our emotional state and we can visualize the expansion of our torus field which is an energy field that our body is producing generating completely naturally without any conscious effort our bodies are doing it naturally but when we start expanding it consciously we start strengthening our immune system we start strengthening our energy our life force our focus our magnetic energy becomes stronger so when we start living more intentionally and we are able to raise our frequency and to expand our torus field our energy becomes more healing and more magnetic so it's much easier to attract certain wanting results into our lives when intentions are pure and we act out of gratitude our energy becomes really really strong that's how you can strengthen your chi it's nothing mystical here it's science it's it's um, something that is happening all the time but of course we find it in ancient traditions because they already knew all of that so we are just remembering once again how powerful we truly are the fifth reminder to protect your energy is to take many breaks in your day I'm sure you're a busy person and we all are and sometimes during our work during whatever we are doing we may find ourselves getting tired or overwhelmed or exhausted and if you are feeling overwhelmed give yourself permission to take breaks and step away from intense situations to recharge and regain balance sometimes all you need is you know just to close your eyes and make five deep breaths and just remind yourself a few things you're grateful for and maybe a few things you've taken for granted start appreciating them it will help you to acknowledge the things that are already going well in your life and will help you to protect from intense energies but it's also important to note that um, if you feel like your life is moving faster and faster somewhere you will need to make a change because otherwise you may get into what people call rat race so you have to be aware like um, how much is enough until things become too extreme so be aware and right now we are in this um, month that comes under the number eight something i've shared with you before which is a deep reminder of importance of balance of importance of polarities so we learn to nurture both parts of polarity so we can find the middle point which means as much as you're working hard on something also work <laughs> work on your inner peace and harmony work you know take time take take time for rest for rejuvenation for recharge something really important the sixth step is to make regular mindset checks this is something really important because we're all living in a collective cloud uh, the cloud of collective consciousness and if our energy is not strong and if we become overwhelmed it's most probably because we've plugged ourselves to the collective thoughts and that's why it's so important to pause ourselves here and there and notice oh that's what i'm thinking right now and usually we recognize it because we've started to feel a bit overwhelmed. We sta we've started to feel all kinds of different, maybe lower emotions, more negative emotions. 
And all emotions are byproducts of what happens in the mind. But if you do constant mindset checks, you can uh, be more intentional and more conscious with yourself and therefore navigate your mind with intention into the direction that is meaningful, purposeful and coherent for you. So be kind towards yourself and use some positive affirmations to reinforce your inner strength and resilience. Whatever words or thoughts may be uplifting for you, may be helpful for you, use them consciously because thoughts are so powerful. And then be aware of the words you're saying because words are spells. That's why we say spelling, right? Be aware of that especially in these times of extremes, it's really easy to become negative. So keep raising your frequency, keep raising your vibration. The seventh reminder is something that is obvious, but I want to say to you to surround yourself with supportive people. Spend time with people who uplift and support you, who remind you of your worth, of your value. And try to spend less time with those who are pulling you down. It doesn't mean that you start completely ignoring them and, you know, you you block them from everywhere. But just be aware what kind of people surround you most of the time. So you notice, okay, is this supportive for myself? Because that's where we need to make some boundaries and say, okay... I have to make a change here. And sometimes we have to go onto a solo journey. So we recognize that maybe all those people who I thought are my friends were not actually my friends. They were just spending time with me because they were bored. Right? So we need to be aware, like, what kind of people we allow into our circle. So just pay attention to that and surround yourself with supportive people. Get into a community that will accept you with open arms because you will notice that um, it's really beautiful to be somewhere where you feel like you belong. It's really beautiful and you deserve that kind of a community. You deserve that kind of a circle. So value yourself so much and love yourself so much that you will give yourself an opportunity to connect with those kind of people. And trust me, if you're living intentionally, those people will find you by itself. It will happen. The eighth step is to limit your exposure to negative information and focus on more uplifting content when possible. That's why I love to read books. I love to educate my mind with something that can enlighten me with knowledge, with real knowledge, with something helpful. And every time I learn something new, I notice, well, the negative information never had a goal to enlighten us, but rather to block us from seeing our true potential. But when we start studying anything, the real history, the real science, our potential, ancient civilizations, whatever we study, we always find something uplifting there. We always find something that inspires us, and that's what we should focus on. There's a lot of negative news and negative information around us, and some of them are here to inform us about something. But most of the time, we should focus on something that can inspire us, that can uplift us, that can make us better humans. So really be aware of that. I know that you already know that, but you needed a reminder. And the last reminder I want to give you to cope with those intense energies is something really important. I also mentioned it in the yesterday's video to nourish your soul. Nourish your soul. What does it mean? Well, your soul craves playfulness, creative expression, joy, dancing, connection with other like soul (laughs) beings, right? Like-minded people. 
that's what your soul craves the most. It craves that dancing. It craves connection. It craves creative expression. When you allow yourself to put yourself onto the canvas, to give all to that music, to 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 that into that book, into whatever you're producing, creating, generating, whatever. That's what your soul is craving. And to nourish your soul means that you start doing more of those things that you're craving on that heart level. So meditate on that and pay attention to what sparks that sense of joy, what sparks that sense of inspiration and do more of that. You will see that you will start to look at life from a whole another level. And maybe through that work, you will notice why you've come here in the first place. Like you will notice, oh, I'm I'm so creative. I never thought how creative I actually am. Oh, what else can I make with all of that, right? And we may awaken to whole new understandings once we start paying more attention to what helps us to shine our lights, right? So my friends, I hope you found something valuable today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Thanks to all of you for supporting my art in our Etsy shop. I draw my passion. The link is also in the description of this video. I love you all, my friends. Stay beautiful. Until next time, one love. <music>